Welcome to the library. Let's go see a show. Every Who down in Whoville liked Christmas a lot. But the Grinch, who lived just north of Whoville, did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now, please don't ask why. No one quite knows the reason. It could be his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be, perhaps, that his shoes were too tight. But I think that the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was two sizes too small. But whatever the reason, his heart or his shoes, he stood there on Christmas Eve hating the hoos, staring down from his cave with a sour grinchy frown at the warm lighted windows below in their town. For he knew every who down in Whoville beneath was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath. And they're hanging their stockings, he snarled with a sneer. Tomorrow is Christmas. It's practically here. And he growled with his Grinch fingers, nervously drumming. I must find some way to stop Christmas from coming. For, for he knew in the morning those who girls and boys would rise bright and early and rush to their toys and then, oh, the noise, oh, the noise, 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 noise. That's one thing he hated. The noise, noise. Noise, noise. Then the Who's, young and old, would sit down to a feast. They'd feast and they'd feast and they'd feast, 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 feast. They'd feast on Who pudding and rare Who roast feast. This was one thing the Grinch couldn't stand at the least. And then they'd do something he liked least of all. All the Who's down in Whoville, the tall and the small, would stand close together with Christmas bells ringing. they stand hand in hand and the Who's would start singing. They'd sing and they'd sing and they'd sing, 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 sing. And the more the Grinch thought of this Who Christmas thing, the more the Grinch thought I must stop this whole thing. For 79 years I've put up with it now and I must stop this Christmas from coming. But how? Then he got an idea, an awful idea. The Grinch got a wonderfully awful idea. And he chuckled and clucked, he laughed in his throat. And he made a quick Santa Claus hat and a coat. He chuckled and clucked, what a great Grinchy trick. In this hat and this coat I look just like Saint Nick. All I need is a reindeer. The Grinch looked around, but since reindeer are scarce, there was none to be found. Did that stop the old Grinch? No. He just simply said, if I can't find a reindeer, I'll make one instead. So he called his dog, Max, and he took some red thread and he tied some old horns on the top of his head. Then he loaded some bags and some old empty sacks on a ramshackle sleigh, and he hitched up old Max. Then the Grinch said, get up! And the sleigh started down towards the homes where the homes lay snooze in their town. It was walking to dawn, quiet snow. All the hoos were all dreaming, sweet dreams without fear. When he came to the first little house on the square, 
This is stop number one. The old Grinchy claws hiss. Then he climbed on the roof, empty bags in his fist. And he slid down the chimney. A rather tight pinch, but if Santa could do it, then so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two, and he stuck his head out of the fireplace flue with the little who stockings all hung in a row. The stockings, he grinched, are the first things to go. Then he slithered and slunk with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room, and he took every present. Pop guns and bicycles, roller skates, rum, books and puzzles and fruit and plums. He stuffed them in bags. And fruit, he pinched back in, stuffed all the bags, one by one. Then he slunk to the icebox. He took the Who's feast. He took the Who pudding. He took the roast feast. He cleaned out their icebox as quick as a flash. Why the Grinch even took their last can of Who hash. He stuffed all the food up the chimney with glee. And now Grin the Grinch, <laughs> I will stuff up the tree. And the Grinch grabbed the tree and he started to shout when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned around fast and saw a small who. It was Cindy Lou Who, who was not one well to. The Grinch had been caught by this tiny who daughter, who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the Grinch and said, Santa Claus, why? Why are you taking our Christmas tree? Why? Now you know that old Grinch was so sly and so slick, he put up a lie. He pulled it up quick. Why, my sweet little pot, the fake Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my dear. I'll fix it up there. Then I'll bring it back here. And his lie fooled the child. And he patted her head and he got her to drink a drink and he sent her to bed. But when Cindy Lou Who went to bed with her cup, he went to the chimney and shoved the tree up. And the last thing he took was the log for their fire. On their walls, he left nothing but hooks and some wire. And the one scrap of food that he left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for a mouse. It was quarter to dawn when he packed up his sled, packed it up with their presents, the ribbons, the wrappings, the food for the feast, the trimmings, the trappings, 3,000 feet up, up the side of Mel Crumpet. He rode with his load to the tip top to dump it. Poo, poo to the hoos, he was grinchously humming. They're finding out now that no Christmas is coming. They're just waking up. I know just what they'll do. Their mouths will hang open a moment or two. Then the Who's down in Whoville will all cry, Boo Hoo! That's a sound, said the Grinch. I simply must hear. So he paused, and the Grinch put a hand to his ear. And he did hear a sound coming over the snow. It started in low. It started to grow, but this sound, sound wasn't sad. This sound sounded merry. It shouldn't be so, but it was merry, very. He hadn't stopped Christmas from coming. It came. Somehow or other it came. 
just the same. The Grinch stood with his ice feet. The ice cold in the snow, puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without presents, it came without bags, it came without ribbons, tinsels and tags. He puzzled three hours till his puzzler was sore. Then the Grinch thought of something he'd never thought of before. Maybe Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. Maybe Christmas, perhaps, means a little bit more. And what happened then? Well, in Whoville they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day. And the moment his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he rode with his load through the bright morning light. He brought back the toys and the food for the feast. And he, he himself, the Grinch, carved the roast beast. Ah. Now, could you stand another story? It's not for you, but you're allowed to listen. I've got one for all the mummies here. All the mummies. It's just for them. Oh, no, 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 it's not for the daddies. Because these stories are always from the man's point of view. And I've written one for you, from the woman's point of view. Can you remember what it's like on Christmas morning? Now, you've heard an old traditional story, the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the wind, by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. And Mama in her kerchief and I in my cap were just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from my bed to see what was the matter. Away to the window I flew in a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash, and what to my wondering eyes should appear. Say, eight tiny reindeer, the little old driver, so quick, and so quick. I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. Well, that's not the story I'm going to tell you. <laughs> no, that was all from the man's point of view. The night before Christmas. Now, can you remember what happens on the morning of Christmas? Well. It was the morning of Christmas, and all through the house, chaos descended on me and my spouse. The stockings were down from the place they'd been hung, and along with the packages, I was unstrung. The children were fighting, inflicting such pain that visions of doctor's bills shot through my brain. Is that blood on the red dress of John's little sister? He was throwing toys at her, but swears that he missed her. The wrappings and ribbons of gifts they had found Leave the litter of nightmares and chaos around. That's a beautiful sweater, but where is the card? Please ride your new tricycle out in the yard. Who gave you that squirt gun? Don't use it inside. Then I slipped on a skateboard. Joyous yuletide. Whilst their dad sips his eggnog, I wade through the debris under the tree. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang to the door to see what was the matter and what to my agonized eye should appear. But my family and in-laws, they're all eating here. Now, eight little deers, I reflect in my gloom. I'll slay them if they make a mess of the room. Stop dancing and prancing and, you, and running, you vixen. What, go out to the yard where you can't get in. More trouble. I glance in the mirror. My hair is a mess. But my unmarried sister has another new dress. She used to be bashful, but now she's much bolder. My dear, you appear 